coming up on International Trade Focus. We shall take a look at the city's depreciation against major trading currencies and its impact on the activities of traders in Ghana. The Ghana city has been experiencing periods of depreciation against major trading currencies, causing economic challenges for businesses and the trading community. The depreciation has led to increased import costs, disrupted trade and economic activities, and affected businesses that rely on imports, exports, or foreign investment. On today's episode of International Trade Figures, we shall take a look at the depreciation of the city against major trading currencies and its impacts on trading activities here in Ghana. International Trade Figures is brought to you by Gol, Good Energy, ADB, Tuli, Agric and more, Public Elegance and Pediasi Valley Resort. Stay tuned for our Focal Point segment. The Ghana city continues to experience periods of depreciation against major currencies such as the dollar, euro and pound, raising alarms within the business community. As of May 2024, the city has lost approximately 14% of its value against the dollar since January. This follows a similar trend from the previous year when the city depreciated by around 20% against the dollar throughout 2023, according to the Bank of Ghana's annual economic report. Although there's been significant improvement, the continuous decline has exacerbated economic uncertainties and impacted both businesses and consumers alike. This recurring issue is not new. Each year, the city faces similar pressures, particularly during the first quarter. Several factors contribute to this trend. Financial analysts point to the practice of foreign companies repatriating their profit to their home countries. This typically occurs after they finalize their annual financial statement, which they often do at the beginning of the year. For instance, in the first quarter of 2023, foreign companies repatriated approximately $500 million, a significant factor in the city's depreciation, according to the Ministry of Finance. The demand for foreign currency to facilitate these transfers place significant pressure on the city, causing it to depreciate. The situation is further aggravated post-Christmas when importers and retailers, having depleted their inventories due to high seasonal sales, rush to restock. In the first quarter of 2024 alone, the demand for foreign currency increased by 15% to the same period in 2023, intensifying the strain on the city. There is also growing concern about the enforcement of exchange rate regulations in Ghana. Lax oversight has allowed unregistered intermediaries to dominate the foreign exchange market. These middlemen, alongside certain forex bureaus that benefit from a weakening city, often operate unchecked, exacerbating the depreciation. In 2023, it was estimated that over 30% of foreign exchange transactions occurred through unregistered entities, according to the Ghana Statistical Service, further destabilizing the city. Recognizing the critical impact of the city depreciation on the economy, the government of Ghana has implemented various measures to stabilize the city. These include tightening monetary policies, increasing foreign reserves, and negotiating with international financial institutions for support. In 2023, government secured a $3 billion loan from the International Monetary Fund, IMF, to bolster its foreign reserves. Additionally, effort to boost local production and reduce import dependency aim to create a more resilient economy. According to the Bank of Ghana, stricter regulations have also been introduced to curb illegal forex trading activities. Finance Minister Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam, during a press conference addressing the state of the economy, talked about the city's depreciation, citing a 14% drop against the dollar this year. The finance minister highlighted some factors that are contributing to the current depreciation 
of the CD. But for recent pressures, we are seeing on the exchange rate movement, ladies and gentlemen, the exchange rate has been largely stabilized over some time with the depreciation of the CD against the US dollar from 54.2% at the end of November 2022 to 27.8% at the end of December 2023. The city's stability has continued into 2024 with a cumulative depreciation of 14.2% as of May 20th, 2024 compared to 20.7% recorded in the same period in 2023. And therefore, people may see the city depreciating uh, fast uh, recently. If you compare the depreciation year to date, from January to date, the city has depreciated by about 14.2%. Same time last year, it depreciated by 20.7%. So on that you know, comparative basis, we, we are safe to conclude that the city is still strong, very strong. We expect the stability to improve into the medium term as we complete debt restructuring, as we make progress on fiscal consolidation, and as we improve on our reserves over the medium term. The recent pressures on the city that I have uh, referred to uh, are largely as a result of the strengthening of the U.S. dollar against major trading currencies across the world including ours. And therefore, we es expect that as the U.S. Uh, currency uh, also moderates in its strength, the effect will be felt uh, on our currency. Another reason is the seasonal forex demand, including elevated demand from corporate institutions. Then also, we have paid contractors. As of now, year to date, I think we've spent some 49 billion Ghana cities. Same time last year, we did 41 billion Ghana cities. And so this demonstrates that a lot of liquidity, city liquidity, is in the market. And we have seen uh, some people uh, looking for uh, U.S. Uh, uh, dollars to uh, buy with the cities that uh, we, ha we have put out, out there. And so these are some of the reasons, including the payments to IPPs, independent power producers. You will recall that we started negotiating with them as a result of which we, have to, we had to make a bullet payment, one off payment, uh, amounting to some uh, 400 million United States dollars. And so they all put pressure on the, on the city. But also, uh, what is known to all of us, the common uh, reason is speculation. So much speculation out there. And we need people to uh, know that this speculation is not helping us. It's not helping the economy. The finance minister also outlined measures to stabilize the currency, including intensifying gold programs, fiscal consolidation, and revenue mobilization with expectations of improved stability in the medium term. The Ministry of Finance will continue to work with the Bank of Ghana to implement measures to address the rapid depreciation of the city. And some of the measures that we have already put in place, and I was told this morning that we are already seeing the, the results uh, of the effect of this uh, uh, policy, uh, policies and measures we, we, we have put in place. So we are fast-tracking the fiscal consolidation process through rationalizing spending and enhancing revenue mobilization, intensification of the gold for oil program and appropriate FX interventions by the Bank of Ghana. We are also intensifying through the Bank of Ghana the gold for the reserve program, what they also call the gold purchases uh, program. The disbursement of the third tranche under the IMF program, which we are expecting in June, is also going to support the building of uh, foreign exchange reserves and also disbursement from other ongoing projects uh, including the 150 million dollar facility world bank facility which parliament approved last week friday will all come in to support the, the reserves we also expecting the disbursement of 300 million united states dollars under the world bank development policy operation too, possibly in the third quarter of this year, and disbursement of $200 million to Ghana Exim Bank and Ghana Commercial Bank, GCB, by EBIT, ECOWAS Bank for Investment and uh, Development, later in the year. And, of course, again, what is known to us, 
the expected 2024-2025 cocoa syndication proceeds in the fourth quarter of this year, they will all crystallize and come together to support the build-up of the reserves uh, in order to uh, strengthen the city uh, as well as support the budget in the implementation of government programs. In all, we expect in total disbursements of at least 2.32 billion US dollars before the end of the year to add to the significant foreign Asian reserves already built up by the Bank of Ghana. And on this basis, I wish to assure the Ghanaian people that there is enough foreign exchange supply in the market. Hence, there is no need to rush to buy forex and will continue to ensure that the supply is sustained, if not even increased. The depreciation of the CD has a huge impact on the trading community. As the value of the CD decreases, the cost of imported goods and services rise. This increase in prices can lead to inflationary pressures, making it more expensive for traders to procure goods for resale. Additionally, fluctuations in the exchange rate can erode profit margins for traders, especially those involved in international trade or reliant on imported inputs. The trading community, comprising importers, exporters, wholesalers and retailers, bears the brunt of CD depreciation as they navigate fluctuating costs and uncertain market conditions. Importers in particular face challenges in pricing their goods competitively while maintaining profitability. Higher import costs translate to increased prices for consumers, impacting purchasing power and overall demand for goods. Currency depreciation adds complexity to financial planning and risk management for traders. Businesses may need to adjust pricing strategies, renegotiate contracts, or seek alternative suppliers to mitigate the impact of CD fluctuations. Small and medium-sized enterprises within the trading community lacking the resources of larger corporations are particularly vulnerable to current risks and may struggle to absorb additional costs. The depreciation of the CD also affects consumer behavior as higher prices for imported goods and reduced purchasing power influence spending patterns. Consumers may opt for cheaper domestically produced alternatives or cut back on discretionary spending leading to shifts in demand within the trading community. We sat down with the CEO of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mark Bedu Abwaji, to dissect the issue of the city depreciation and its profound impact on the business community. Our discussion delved into strategies to boost the private sector, enabling businesses to capitalize on the opportunities presented by currency depreciation, from diversifying exports to investing in innovation. We also examined the steps necessary to harness the potential potential of a weaker city and propel Ghana's economic growth. Mr. Bidra Bajis, we cannot underestimate the impact that the CD depreciation has on industries in the country. Whether you are importing, whether you are exporting, at the end of the day, it trickles down to, you know, like every facet of the industry. So currently, what are some of the challenges that your members are facing as far as the CD depreciation is concerned? <laughs> a lot of challenges. <laughs> You know, our economy is a small open economy, well integrated into the global economy. So we import and also export, but we seem to import a lot. We import both finished goods, manufactured goods, both um, the raw materials and also the machines. But most of the machines that we are using here, we don't manufacture them. So we have to um, import them. You cannot import them with the CD, because it's not what we call hard currency, globally accepted currency. So you have to convert your CD into a dollar or a hard currency. So anytime your CD depreciates against the major trading currencies, i.e. the dollar, the euro, and the pound, it affects almost everything in the economy. At the beginning of the year, or even late last year, 
a lot of Ghanaians imported some of these products, the finished goods most likely because of the Christmas. At that time, the city was around 9 or so to 10. So we have imported the product. Now is the time for you to pay. The city is 15.5. The pound is almost 20 to one, one pound. So we have imported a product from, from UK and we have to pay. Instead of, let's say, 12 at the beginning of the year, now 20. The difference, the question is, where are you going to get it from? And most of the things we do here, our revenue is generated in cities, not in dollars or in pounds. So you always have to convert. That is one thing. If you have borrowed or you have gone for a loan, a dollar-denominated loan, at the beginning of the year, probably your projection, even Bank of Ghana's projection for the year, is that the, by the end of the year, the city to the dollar will be about 13.5. So just by the first five months, we have way exceeded Bank of Ghana's projection. At, at the, uh, on the 22nd of May, 2024, the city, the official depreciation from Bank of Ghana, the city had depreciated by 14.6%. That is the official. Go to the unofficial, the forest, where it's selling close to 16 and 20. It has depreciated over 17 uh, percent. So if you want to pay that loan, you need more CDs to get the dollar for you to be able to pay. Why are you getting the, 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 the money, the CD to, to be able to, to get? So people are not able to service their dollar-denominated loans. And you know the impact of it? Either they take you to court or they can confiscate whatever assets uh, you have. You have imported. Now you have to pay. You are not able to pay. The other thing is that the capital of Ghanaians, those who import, had been wiped out significantly. So previously, you were using um, 10,000 Ghana cities to import. Now, that 10,000 Ghana cities cannot import the same quantity of goods and services you were importing at this time. We will import less. So once you are importing, almost 20 or 30 percent of your capital is gone because you can now do less with the city that you have. So if there is one macroeconomic indicator that we should not joke with, is the exchange rate. It affects almost everything. In fact, the pass-through effect is what we are seeing with the high uh, inflation that we are, we are experiencing now. In fact, a number of reasons has been given, some largely from the managers of the economy. In fact, if you borrow to the extent that you cannot service your, your loans and you, you create a huge deficit that you ask the central bank to finance. For the past three or four years, the central bank has been financing the, our deficit, which means that they are increasing the money supply. Your money supply goes up your currency will depreciate. Simple um, economics. People have a lot of money in their hands. They are looking for areas to invest. Previously, they would have invested in government bonds. Now, those who invested in government bonds, you use DDEP, domestic debt exchange, now they have lost their money. Any rational Ghanaian will not invest in government bonds again. So they're looking for options, areas for them to be able to invest. And that area is buying foreign uh, 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 currency. So once they are buying, then the demand will go up. Less supply, because you're also not exporting more to get this, the increase the supply. There will be pressure on the CD, and the CD will depreciate. This is simple for all of us. As the Vice President rightly said, the same rate, <laughs> the, the, the fundamentals with the same rate will expose that. Here. And the exchange rate has really exposed that. My biggest concern is that we don't seem to have an end in sight. As businesses, we need to plan. And we need certain indicators for us to be able to plan. 
you give me 13.5 at the end of, at the beginning is even depreciate more than more than that how do i plan so you cannot plan because you don't know what is happening so at this time we need a short-term measure to reverse the depreciation to stabilize it and then we can think about the long-term measure in fact when we continue like this cost of production will go up and businesses will have no option to transfer the increase in cost to consumers. So we should brace ourselves up for an increase in prices in the, the, the next few days ahead of us. If not, as is against done. Um, low purchasing power. As against low purchasing power. So it's a very complex uh, situation that all of us are in now. But you know, in other jurisdictions, they intentionally depreciate their currency or devalue their currency to promote their export. When your, your currency depreciates, there's an opportunity for you. Right. Because your, your product in the sight of the global, those outside Ghana, will become cheaper. So they will buy more of your product and also becomes expensive for us to import. So your trade balance will improve. But because we don't have any product, we are not taking advantage of the depreciation. So if you go to Japan and they see that their prices are very high, they can depreciate their currency and increase their export, reduce import, and they have a positive trade balance. And that will help you in your balance of payment. You have a reserve whenever you have issues. We are not taking advantage because we don't have a product. The product we have are the gold, the cocoa, and the other things. We have, we have mortgaged all those products already. We are here waiting for syndicated loan to come. So that is why we are more concerned about ensuring that we incentivize and empower the private sector. Because they are the ones that are going to produce. But if you keep on making things difficult for them, increasing the cost of production, your city will depreciate, but you cannot take advantage of the depreciation. So there is always some opportunity in there, which as a country, we've not been able to take advantage of. So let's think through and see how we can take advantage of depreciation. It's definitely not a good thing for, for all of us. Remarking on measures government has put in place to salvage the depreciation of the city, the CEO of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce commended government's effort to address the city depreciation, adding that although measures taken to salvage the depreciation of the city are a step in the right direction, a quicker intervention is critical to help businesses plan better. He emphasized the need for swift action to mitigate the adverse effect of the depreciation, which has impacted the private sector's ability to predict and prepare for the future. Talking about the measures, medium-term measures, um, recently the, the finance minister outlined um, certain measures that have been put in place or they are putting in place to stabilize the currency and he mentions that these measures include intensifying gold programs, fiscal consolidation, revenue mobilization, um, among the myriad of you know measures that government intends to um, take to stabilize the, the, the currency. What are your remarks on this? Well, I think they are all, um, if, you, if you actually do analysis of what is causing the depreciation, these measures are really measures that will help us come out of it. So fiscal discipline, it means that you are not overrunning your budget. So you don't create a deficit for the central bank to monetize, for it to increase the money supply. That is good. And gold is also very good because we need to build a reserve. Once Gold is as good as the dollar. So once you build a reserve and you have trade deficits, and you need to pump in, you have money to be able to stabilize the situation. Even though we are operating a flexible exchange rate system, there are days or situations where we come in just to sterilize the, the, the situation. So you are allowed sometimes to pump in and also just to build your reserve. So once we have good, it backed the local currency, it makes it stronger. So if you don't have a reserve in terms of dollars, we have good because once you take the, the gold, you get the you get the dollar. These are all good. But I think that the over concentration now of waiting for IMF facility and also for cocoa board, every year we book for cocoa syndication loan. Last year it didn't do well as expected. It's one of the reasons why 
the city is depreciating as together with the a payment of the of the IPPs. But all these things are good. But for how long? Is this something we can do immediately to reverse the process? If you're not careful, by the time we do all these things, most businesses would have collapsed. So immediately, what, what are we doing? People have said that our remittances, which is very key, previously, if somebody is sending money to you, you get a dollar and then go and exchange for. Now, you get on your mobile phone and you see CDs. Ask yourself, where is that dollar? So people take money outside and then they pay in CDs. So our supply goes down because the money will not come to, to us. Secondly, we need to also look at our retention policies. If you look at our trade balance, it's been in surplus for a number of days. But ask yourself whether we get the hard cash. Because a lot of the money stays outside. And also within the first quarter of the year, a lot of these foreign businesses, they control our economy. They are transferring their profit, their dividend to people outside. Because that's where their shareholders are. Just one transfer can wipe up all the IMF money that is coming. We have suggested that instead of doing everything within the first quarter, can we sit with them and ask that if this economy collapses, you also don't have a business, can we stagger your transfer? So within the first uh, quarter, assuming, let's do 30%, second quarter, 30%, third quarter, so that you'll be able to also have uh, some of these uh, foreign currencies uh, with us. That's what we have. So they should stagger the payment. And I don't think that if you go to these multinationals, they will say no. So it's something that I think that we need to explore. I know we have said several times, probably they are doing something about it. If they are, they should communicate that this is what uh, we are doing. If you don't put some of these measures in place, every year we'll come back and come and talk about city depreciation. And man, this is an election year. And in election year, a CD depreciates faster than non-election year. In fact, on average, we get about 16% depreciation um, um, during election year. Just the first, we have even exceeded 16%. We don't know what is ahead of us. And for me, that is, that, that, that is risky. So we, we have the solutions, but it's about implementation. How quick can we do that so that we don't run down businesses? Now, the Ghana CD for several years continues to experience depreciation against major currencies. And as Ghana being a trade-driven um, country, we can stick away the impact that the CD depreciation has on business activities within the country. On International Trade Focus this week, we are looking at the impact of the CD depreciation on business activities in the country. Joining us in this discussion is the president of the Ghana Union of Traders Association, Guta. Dr. Joseph Oping. Thank you very much, Doc, for your time. Yeah. Right. So, first of all, um, give us a brief background on the, the CD depreciating against major trade currencies and how it's affecting trade activities in the country. Yeah, I think the uh, CD depreciation has become perennial, especially um, at the end of every year. But aside that, that problem is a structural one that needs to be tackled. And so, um, if we have to go the ins and outs, I don't think your time can be able to allow us. But for all, I believe that um, the uh, foreign dominance of our economy um, can uh, be cited uh, as a major fight, a factor. Because even for the f past uh, couple of years, about five years, we've been having a balance of trade um, surplus. If that is so, then uh, the city should be strengthened. It means that we do more export than that of import. And so why is this so? Is it because the demand is so much or is it because of other factors? Yeah, I believe that because our economy is in the hands of the foreigner, the major export that we do, gold, um, oil, bauxite, and those ones that are apart from cuckoo, all of these are in the hands of this foreigner. Mm -hmm. And when they export, and the forest does not retain. That's the major. Even though we capture it in our books, but the, 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 the money itself does not retain. 
and that's uh, one major factor. And then also, all the uh, the juiciest areas of our economy, be it communication, be it banking, be it call it, the even uh, even including the uh, retail giants like the China Mall, China Town, and all that. All these uh, are in the hands of the foreigner. And at the end of each year, like uh, the first quarter of each year, like this one that we are suffering, is uh, also because they do their repatriations and all that. And we are not talking about small repatriations. And we do not have any retention of sin. All that we have to do is to find a way that uh, the investment law should be revived so that they, could, uh, they should retain some of their profit for themselves, not even for the government, and also the one that will be retained for government through investment and equity by way of our um, resources and all that. If we do not have any retention policy where some of these um, uh, resources can be retained, then we are flossed to the foreigner. The commanding height that were promised is um, by our forefathers um, is not bearing fruits. And so it's very worrying. And aside that, um, we should also um, um, look at the trade of uh, money across the uh, borders. That's the uh, cross-border trading of money should be controlled. Just recently, I issued a press release uh, to caution um, the government that uh, we should not um, allow the forest crisis in Nigeria to trickle down in Ghana. At that time, the um, uh, the exchange rate was um, for dollar. It was twelve point eight. When I said that, within few days, we also started having the problem. Because what happened? That Nigeria is such a huge economy that when they have problem in the sub region, they trickle down on it because um, they have the money, they have the resources, they have the banks that cuts across this. So they just put the money there and come here, take the money, and then. Mm -hmm. um, and change it and shuttle it across the um, sub-region. And so this, this is what um, also we should look at and then do control. One thing that I've also identified is about um, the Bank of Ghana, some of its regressions and all that, about um, the documentations, um, the re stringent uh, documentation requirement by Bank of Ghana. Is, is, uh, that one is um, they put fear into most businesses mm. to the extent that they hardly do the mainstream transaction with the mainstream banks. Rather, they do their transactions with the black market and the forest bureaus and then the offshore trading and all that. So even as a country, I, I, can, I can tell you emphatically that Bank of Ghana is not in the known the kind of volumes of um, 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 forest that we trade in. Because uh, these monies does not go through the mainstream. Mm. And so the black market and the forest bureaus are dictating um, um, the rates and all that. So that's why you, 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 when you came here, you mentioned the rate to be 14 cents. But who cares? Mm. But that's not the rate. Mm. Where we do our business is <laughs> the black market. So we say that no. But Bank of Ghana say 14 cents. We say no. The actual rate is 15 cents. Because that's where we do. Our, our transaction yeah. and all that. So we should think about how we, should, we can relax on some of these um, documentation re requirements mm -hmm. so that to put away any fear. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, what, uh, what Bank of Ghana requires is to know the actual re transactions that go through. So invoice value plus bill of lading should be enough for such transactions so that they also be able to know the actual volumes and they will be able to control the rate and mm -hmm. all that. The media problem now is the uh, speculation. Mm -hmm. Speculation is so rife that people are buying um, the dollar as a store of value. Mm -hmm. And people who otherwise do not, even importers who do not have the need now for the dollar, maybe they will do transaction in, in the future, are buying it now. So all these are put um, pressure on the on the dollar so this, um, the only thing that is fueling this is uncertainty so all that the government have to do is to communicate um, 
the um, AIDS policies and then interventions that will inspire hope into the system. When that is done, I, I believe the finance minister um, um, did some press conference that seek to do exactly that. But Bank of Ghana doing it, um, finance ministry doing it, and people being assured that the problem is going to be solved, then it will bring um, these uh, monies uh, back because then people will be afraid that maybe the rate will drop and then they will bring it back and then it will help stabilize the city. Then uh, uh, the third tranche of the IMF loan um, should be fast tracked. We have to do everything under our control, uh, the, the finance ministry and uh, the, the uh, international community here, all to help so that we can be able to get the third tranche ASAP. When, when that one comes, it will also inspire a greater hope and then it will lead to the um, stability. Don't forget that during the last quarter of 2022, businesses suffered a lot. Mm -hmm. Depreciation simply means um, loss of capital. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we lost about 50% um, of our capital. All businesses, mm -hmm. especially importers and all that. And so it, it got stabilized somewhere in 2023. And that's where we, we thought we were about to take off and then be able to recoup our previous losses. But that is not to be. Now, um, we are losing in the neighborhood of about 23% mm -hmm. well, since um, January. Mm -hmm. Because um, if January your working capital, uh, your import capital is um, $100,000, then you will need 1.2 million to buy the dollar. As I'm speaking now, um, if you want to uh, buy the same um, $100,000, we have to go and find a top up of about 370,000 Ghana cities as a top up. If you are un unable to get the top up, then you have to contend yourself with 80,000 USD. So your capital has been spirited away. And then businesses keep shrinking. Our businesses keep shrinking because you are unable to buy the same quantities of goods that you used to uh, buy. So first, if you, uh, you used to bring uh, um, two 40 fitter container. Maybe this time you have to bring about one um, 40 fitter container. So your wholesale will be uh, very empty and then you are unable also to sell your goods on credit to the retailers. So at this point the retailers suffer so much. So you see um, the, uh, uh, we transact all our business in the dollar. When we go even to China, about 80% of our business is uh, procured mm -hmm. through that corridor. And even though they do not use the dollar as their currency, but because the dollar is the major um, benchmark for all our transactions, we use it to trade and then we use the dollar to pay um, our free charges. And then when you come um, home also, the duty is calculated and benchmarked in dollar. So at any stage of your distance, the dollar is a key component into your costing. Mm -hmm. And then it makes your prices uh, go very high. And when it happens like that, people will just tell you, why don't you pass it on to the uh, consumer? consumer? But the business that we do, we do it not in isolation, but we do it with our customers. So if the customer is unable to buy, then of course, because businesses thrive on turnover. So when we increase the prices, it doesn't serve our own interest. What it means is that we are unable to sell or turn over the way we used to do, and then we, are, we wouldn't be able to service our debt at the bank and even service our suppliers who give us the credit. Mm. And so when it happens like that, you see that we are in uh, very much, we are in trouble, yeah. Based on everything that you said, some of the factors that are causing this um, CD depreciation, most people tend to go to the black market. There's also speculation. And you mentioned that although we are experiencing trade surplus, when it comes to repatriation of dividends and all of that, a, a chunk of the money is going out there, not staying 
in our system. So practically, um, Guta members or the business community in the country, how exactly does this depreciation affect you? Because I know that most of your members import their wares from different countries. So how is this affecting? Our businesses are, are shrinking hmm. in size. That uh, Because we are um, 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 the, uh, the effect of the forest is such that uh, we are unable even to buy the same um, volume of goods that we used to buy as I indicated in the first time. And then also we are unable to even pass on the cost to the consuming public because it, it doesn't serve our interest to even pass it on, even though we have to break even at the same time. So it puts you in a very serious um, situation. Are you not making losses? Yeah, um, um, definitely some of us will make, because we are in competition. You cannot overprice your goods out of competition. Yeah. So in any case, um, you will have to be within competition or you have to hold, simply hold your stocks. Mm -hmm. And people do that. and said, okay, at this stage, if I sell, I wouldn't know how much I'm going to buy again or change the dollar to buy. So people simply keep their stocks. So if you keep your stock, it will mean that you have the resources to pay your debtors. Yeah. So how do you keep your, your stock? So this, uh, I think, uh, those people who are very much resourceful that can do this. Mm -hmm. But most of us can, uh, cannot do uh, that. So we don't have any option than to push your waste and then sell it um, at a reasonable price for the consumer to be able also to buy. But you see, the fact that the price is going up is a natural sequence. Mm -hmm. Because once the dollar goes up, there's no way, because it's a major component of pricing. So it should be transferred to the uh, consumer. When things like this um, happen, in the interim, being the, the president of Guta, what are some measures that you take in order to mitigate the effect on members? At this point, you manage your stocks. Mm -hmm. Because if, if care is not taken, all your stock will, will, will just be spirited away. Mm -hmm. So if you have uh, goods that you have already imported, then you benchmark it with the new um, rate that is going. You don't say that I've already bought the goods, so I'm selling at the old price. No, that's not how we do business. So you have to um, um, uh, be prudent in the way you're doing. You don't have to rush even to sell your goods. And then also, um, um, you, you, if you have the uh, forest, you hold it for some time. If you just tuned in, you're watching International Trade Focus. Our guest for today is the National President of the Ghana Union of Traders Association, Guta, Dr. Joseph Wabing. We are discussing the CD depreciation and the impact that it has on the business community in the country. We'll be back shortly. Don't go away. A warm welcome back. The conversation continues with the president of the Ghana Union of Traders Association, Guta, Dr. Joseph Obeng, on the depreciation of the CD against major trading currencies and its impact on business activities here in Ghana. This conversation has become exhaustive because year after year after year we've had these conversations. As a country, do you think that when it comes to CD depreciation, considering the fact that, as you mentioned, the CD is not a currency strong enough to be able to um, trade globally, um, the dollar, for instance, is what we used to trade globally. And, you know, year in, year out, CD depreciation, trickling down to um, businesses, trickling down to consumers, and at the end of the day, affecting the economy as a whole. Do you think that we've paid enough attention to this? And what is not going right? Is government not listening or government is trying, but they are still not, you know, able to find a, a solution to this? So since the government have been trying to do something, Solely that um, probably we do not know how to go about it. You see, um, the present government uh, tried the 1D, 1F. Because all in the wake of um, um, trying to bring um, uh, self-sufficiency into the uh, economy. And so how far have you gone with that um, 1D, 1F? Um, I mean, we are into eight years into this. At least we should be able to take those that have been successful and then um, um, trying to feed us. Mm. You see, if you are not getting it, then there's something that is missing. Then um, 
you recall that they also brought the full uh, um, import substitution. Yeah. yeah. So the import substitution is also good. We su uh, support it because we can't uh, uh, always consume and buy from outside. Because when we travel, we see what other people are doing. I, I, I just went to Iran. And a country under sanction, they, they are able to produce almost everything. Mm -hmm. And then they are self-sufficient in what they do. And so that's what we should be able to do. But whilst we are doing it, we should be able to do it well. And then identify those areas that we have comparative advantage. And then make sure that we support those areas. And then we make those products a hub of manufacturing in Ghana. When we are able to do that, because that one, we have the raw materials here. We have uh, the competitive advantage and all that. Like the ceramic tiles, the only two companies or three companies, they are doing well. And then the sub-region, they are buying from them. Then we can identify that, okay, this is a good area for us. We encourage a lot more people to go there. Then uh, uh, We produce more. And then the, the whole of the sub-region will be recognized as the hub for tiles manufacturing. That's what most economies do. You do what you have the advantage. So, um, like in the areas of biscuits and all that, now biscuits, most people do not import again because we are self-sufficient in that production. They, they made it very uh, efficient, price is competitive, and then if you bring from outside, you cannot. But that's what we are talking about. And the cement, in the case of cement and all that, we are also very competitive. And then bottle water, we, we shouldn't... Um, even think about importing it because we have them in abundance. What we have to identify are the other areas that um, are like gold that we don't seem to know. In the areas of uh, share butter, they use it for raw material in so many areas, how to pack it and then um, um, we process it, pack it and sell. Like the uh, plantain chips that we sell is a uh, um, it's well sought after in some other areas. I went to the Caribbeans and they, they love it so much. Just pack it and sell. Find the market out there, the Kubenwa and all that. It's also raw material for hair products and all that. How are we identifying these areas where we have the raw materials here, we have them in abundance and find way to uh, pack it. But when we talk about industrialization, all that comes to mind is that uh, we want to do bauxite integrated and uh, uh, agrochemical. That's not how it starts. It starts from the basis. It starts from the basis. If you're able to identify the base, basic, basic, basic things that we have in abundance that our mothers are doing in the, uh, co their compound house and then um, uh, uh, tell them how to pack it, bag it, and um, uh, 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 then we are, we, are, we are there. So it's not a rocket science. It's only that um, we have overlooked um, what we have uh, potentially what we can do even best. Uh -huh. So uh, so for import substitution, yes, we have to do it, but we have to identify those areas that we have it competitive advantage. Make a deliberate effort to support it, like rice farming and all that. We can make it. We have the land, uh, uh, the, the water bodies are here uh, to irrigate them and all that. Let's do it and then um, uh, make it work, bring the machinery um, uh, for hiring, for renting, and all that. And everybody can do um, 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 rice farming if you want to take it from away from importation. And so um, that's the way to go. That's the surest way to go, to be self-sufficient. But if it should be done, it should be done right. Yeah. Whilst we are trying to industrialize, and whilst we are trying to contain excessive importation, then we do not allow um, these um, foreigners. You know, the, the, with, uh, the import that we do, the bulk import that we do, the volumes that we do, the local share is twenty less than 20%. Mm. All what the indigents bring is less than 20%. The bulk of the, um, the import um, comes from the expatriate the, uh, foreigners who have... Um, and uh, come into the retail space. So when we are trying to even industrialize and manufacture, then these people are holding your leg because they are bringing these goods. And so why don't you use investment laws to contain them? Because, for instance, 
Um, the, what well, that the investment law says is that they should bring a, a, a goods worth of one million. And Presto, they are there in retailing. What is it? Mm. So all that they have to do after um, qualifying to trade is to let their manufacturers in their uh, country bring the goods and then they send, uh, uh, change the money into forest and then send it back to their country. They don't bring the correspondent fund of um, um, import. Mm. They should bring their the fund that they use to import and deposit it in the Bank of Ghana or their banks. But if they come empty-handed, you tell them to bring the goods, only the goods, and then change it into the forest, then you will cry. You always come and do lamentation. Whilst you, you don't know what to do, but other people are just taking your resources and then um, and sending it to their home countries. So if they if you give them space to even do trading, then you tell them to, if you bring thousand containers, then you have to bring the money to Ghana and then you use it to import rather than bringing only the goods and then come and depend on a hard and um, forest. Is that fair? And so we have to use the investment laws to be able to tackle most of these things. Seeing the trend of things, as, as we've already um, talked about, year in, year out. This has been the situation. We try to find solution and then it even gets worse, you know. Should this continue? Should this trend continue? In the future, what do you think that the business space would look like? Now, I ask this question because Ghana is a developing country that depends heavily on trading, on um, the local businesses thriving in order to boost its economy. And here we are having some of these challenges. Should we fail to address these challenges how is our business space or trading space going to be like in the future? But the supply chain will be broken mm. because you know we are interrelated. So it's not only um, for the retail or, or the trading sector. Because you see, um, um, successful manufacturing depends on vibrant distributive sector. And so, um, if say we say that okay, uh, they import too much, so don't uh, let's ignore them and all that, and then we we break down, we 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 collapse. Mm -hmm. Then of course it also affects manufacturing, because mm -hmm. manufacturing can never try. Because uh, manufacturing is not complete unless it reaches the final consumer, and we sell as the vehicle. So whatever it is, uh, we should solve the problem. Make sure if we want our country. Um, um, to grow, to be productive, then of course you do not um, uh, look on whilst the distributive leg of your country is broken. Mm -hmm. uh, that one, um, it will destroy the chain. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's very important that we think that even though we are importers, we do not import just for importing sake. We import for people. Um, it's a service that we provide for the good people of Ghana for what they demand or require. Mm -hmm. And we do that after we have also consumed what we have produced here. And then the shortfall is what we bring. Mm -hmm. So you do not say that, um, oh, they are traders, they are importers, they are nuisance to the economy and all that. So we just ignore them and to fail. When we fail, it trickles to the other sectors. So it's very important that we all succeed. We make sure that we stabilize this currency and we also see it together. And it's a wrap for this week's edition of International Trade Focus. Join us same time next week for some more on international trade related activities here in Ghana and beyond. International Trade Focus is brought to you by Gol, Good Energy, ADB, Truly Agric, and more. Public Elegance and Pediasi Valley Resort. Yeah.